my question for you was I've learned at this gathering yesterday and today that beyond step three there's a step four and that there's a step five step four is just mastery of step three seems weird so step one is ask can't help it step two is source answers none of your business they're just doing it step three is you got to line up with it you got to get in that receptive mode and step four is just getting really good at being in the receptive mode staying there longer going there more quickly the question is why is it so easy for us who have maybe have been conditioned to be the way we are go back to the way we were because law of attraction responds to your active vibrations and because you see people that activate some old vibrations or you watch a movie that activates an old vibration or you meet up with someone that you haven't seen for a while that activates an old vibration these vibrations will remain dormant but there's a possibility of them activating again and so here's the statement that we want you to take away from this important question your vibration is where you last left it on any subject it's where you last left it now it might be dormant even though you left it there but wherever you left it there's a possibility and pretty good possibility really that something's going to happen that's going to activate it again so if when it is activated again if but when if when if when it's activated again if you move it to a better feeling place then next time it's activated it will come to that better feeling place until eventually what's activated will always be right here where you are that's why it just gets easier and easier this is a belief bridging example as your beliefs become more harmonious with the knowing that your inner being holds then there won't be any resistance don't you now know for sure that you know that you had bugaboos or hindering beliefs that now just don't apply to you oh, absolutely but that's how that happened in other words this is how it works contrast causes you to ask you're not in vibrational alignment with what you've asked for yet but you want to be so you look there you think about that you talk about that you get into alignment with it and now you're in alignment with it and boom now it manifests and along with the manifestation comes a new set of contrasting experiences which causes you to launch more desires that you're not a match to but you want to be and so you look at them and you think about them and you find a way to be in alignment with them and you move into alignment with them and now you're in alignment with them and then boom it manifests so now you get the manifestation but you also receive a new set of contrasting experiences experiences and so what keeps happening to you is your desire continues to expand but each time your desire expands it brings a whole lot of things with it that are not going to activate on you in a negative way again when you begin to feel confident about one thing your confidence affects all things so you don't have to go back and rework so many of those vibrations that's why once this gets rolling once you acknowledge that you've got some negative emotion and you deliberately move your thoughts until that negative emotion softens and then you can feel that you're on the move on it and so now you deliberately and wisely because you can feel the resistance is at bay you deliberately now begin goosing up your specific thought about it until the momentum increases and then you feel these thoughts turn into things and you witness the cooperative universe as so many have been describing here today you witness the cooperative universe and you hold that knowing Esther will say every now and again I just can't believe that and then she laughs because she knows those can't be the correct words because nothing will come to you that you don't believe but what she means to say is I'm so surprised and delighted by this not it's unbelievable because anything that's really unbelievable is not going to happen so it doesn't take very many things that you have deliberately thought about and then deliberately felt and deliberately honed into a better feeling place and then been able to witness the universal response to it until there's the manifestation as you run those things over and over in your mind it is our desire that you keep telling yourself the story of our friend finding the diamond forget about the guy who claims he lost it just think about the friend who found the diamond think about the girl who the airline sent her a big jet to take her to Chicago there are all kinds of wonderful things that are about to pop for you and as you 
Take delight in them and recall them and savor them and milk them and practice the vibration of them. That's what step four is, just milking and holding the vibration of them. And then, of course, step five, our favorite step, that's where you are back in step one, but you're not mad at yourself. Step five is when you begin acting like your inner being. Your inner being can see you in distress, but your inner being doesn't find distress. Your inner being acknowledges where you are, but is so solution-oriented that where you are just doesn't dissuade your inner being from knowing where you really are. And when you start feeling like that, it doesn't matter where I appear to be. Your friends say, how you doing? Great. Did you get that job? No. Then why are you great? Because it's unfolding perfectly. Well, how do you know? I just know. But what's the evidence? Don't need evidence. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you just get to that place where you just know. You just know. Because you know the laws. You know about law of attraction. And you know what you've predominantly been feeling. The best answer that we'll ever hear you say to someone is, well, just because I feel so good, it has to be going well for me. It can't not be going well for me. I feel so good. But what evidence do you have of it going good? I don't need evidence. I feel so good. The way I feel is the evidence for me. And stay tuned, because pretty soon you'll be able to see the evidence. But for now, I just feel it. It feels to me like popping corn. When uh. you first pop the corn, you don't smell it. You can't taste it because it's not finished. Yeah, and don't eat it either. And then, <laughs> and then it pops and it pops and it pops, and pretty soon it's popping so frequently that all you hear is one single sound and then the smell comes and the taste and the touch and everything it's a good else is real. manifestation visual. Yeah. yeah. We like to tell you the story of so you put the kernel of corn in the ground because you know how it works. You plant it and you water it and you nurture it and it will grow into a plant and there will be some corn for you in time. But humans who are often so action oriented you wouldn't find yourself out there stomping on the ground demanding that the kernel become a stalk of corn right now because you understand that there is a process. And that's why we like to talk to you about the vortex. But the thing that we want you to hear is that the timing, the timing of your vortex turning into something tangible is always and only about how you feel. It's only, only, and always only, and only, always, ever, only, always, only about how you feel, about your belief or your knowing. And after a while, feel for just a moment, for a brief moment, what doubt feels like. Ugh. Feel it for a moment. And then feel hope. And you know what we're talking about. Just saying the word, you can get a sense of how hope feels so much better than doubt. But hope still has resistance in it. And so think for a moment how when hope turns to belief, how there's an improvement in the way you feel. But the greatest improvement of all, the greatest vibrational releasing of last resistance is when belief turns into knowing, where you just know. You just know with certainty. You just know. You've gathered enough evidence. You're no longer split. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. Wild horses can't talk you out of it. No one can talk you out of it. You're going to Michigan. I only decided two days ago to come. I had put in my own path the resistance of thinking, oh, my husband won't appreciate it that I want to go do this again and spend this money on this because we just did this in San Francisco two months ago. And it didn't seem like I should want that. And as I thought that, I ran back through my mind everything I've learned from you and thought, um, that's just a pocket of shortage you're pulling out there. And your husband's been nothing but supportive. And this is something you want and you've already created it, so go. And so I decided consciously to get out of my own way, and I started to lay the path, and it just unfolded beautifully, of course, to do can, that. Can you feel the power of deciding? Yeah. You can actually feel the visceral feeling of a decision. When you make a decision, not always, but often, you stop the contradiction of energy. When you're in that, well, should I or shouldn't I, that's such an uncomfortable mode. But when you decide, it's like everything lines up with you. Yeah, yeah, it does. And um, I came with my mother, which I came with my mother. She didn't come with me to the event. I 
encouraged her to do that. And she's never heard anything of you, didn't know what she would think, thinks it's kind of a weird concept. But she listened to a recording of me previously in the hot seat, and it intrigued her, and she considered it. But she didn't. But that was okay, because she's supportive of the idea that I wanted to be here. But she took us to a friend's house to stay last night instead of staying here at the hotel, which was what I wanted to do. And I decided I wasn't going to let this bother me. And so I had a good experience, and I woke up at midnight to the sound of the car alarm sounding. But it turned out to be somebody else's car alarm. But when I was up, I noticed that a skunk had perfumed our whole bedroom, and because we'd left the windows open, and my mother was snoring like crazy. And I thought, oh, well, this is okay, because I'm going to remove myself from this situation, because I have every intention of being in a great mood when I go tomorrow to this event. And so I actually spent the night sleeping in a recliner, which, if you've ever done that, it's not necessarily a, a comfortable experience. But still, I woke up in this state of joy because I was coming and I'd had this dream that I'd love to get input on if you want to offer. Um, it was just a little snippet that I recall. And I'd had the dream right before I woke up. And it was of somebody saying to me something like, have you read the book? that we gave to you. And I thought, no, I haven't gotten to it yet. But it was something about being able to like move things. And I hadn't read it, but the person demonstrated to me. And they did this with their hands to something, uh, like a stuffed animal or a doll or something. And it just started moving around the table. And I understood this to be, it was almost like a visitation. I understood this to be an example of what I am in the process of understanding about myself. The thing that we are most interested in pointing out that you are doing that is working well for you is that you're just talking yourself into feeling good all the way along, no matter how mundane the situation is that you're standing in. And the reason that we want to call emphasis to this is because your lives are made up of these what you would feel are rather ordinary situations. But in their ordinariness, in their usualness, most of you are lackadaisical in the way you choose to think about them. Because you only really want to apply deliberate thought to big things that really matter a lot. But it is the usual things that you're encountering on a moment-to-moment, -moment, day day-to-day basis that make up the majority of your vibrational offering. So your point of attraction is mostly about things that you don't think matter very much about, so you don't tend to your vibration very much about them, and then you're surprised when things are not moving along better for you. Several times you said, but then I decided, but then I decided, but then I decided, but then I decided. You can't always control the situation, especially when you're interacting with others. Sometimes there's a compromise or you're yielding to something that they would prefer. But in yielding to something that they prefer, you have a choice about whether you are disappointed about yielding to what they prefer or about whether you decide that this too is all right because you still are in a good place. And so as you continue that, then your life just continues to yield to you what will continue to feel whether you like this or not, we like this. <laughs> then what begins to unfold is it continues to feel sort of usual to you, sort of normal to you. Anybody else looking on is saying, what, you found a $9,000 diamond in the leaves? That seems pretty amazing to somebody that isn't used to the universe just yielding. As you use the phrase, and we know you do, things are always working out for me, things are always working out for me. While that is a satisfying notion, and it is for sure the truth, it's also helpful for you to say, I'm working out for me. I'm choosing things that make it easier for things to work out for me quickly. You can put some deliberateness in that. Things are always working out for me because I'm aware of how I feel and I tend to my vibration incrementally. And I don't let small things that are seemingly unimportant annoy me to the point that momentum gets going and then I've got a sort of out of control situation. It's tending to your vibration is what this conversation is about. And tending to your vibration is the difference between step three and step four. Being in the receiving mode and mastery of that. Really good. 
Yeah, I've had such wonderful examples of... We're at the ending of this day. Oh, okay. Everything is so good with you. It is. We're going to move on. Okay.